All right, so I want to talk about CSS target pseudo classes. Now, this is a way that you can target things on your page based on the URL. I've got uh, some sample HTML right here. I've got th uh, five anchors, rather. Uh, each one of them is pointing to something with an ID. So that's what the hash mark here means. P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, those are the IDs on the page that I want to target. When I click on these links, I want to scroll to these paragraphs, 1 through 5, P1 through P5. And, you know, if I click on number 5, the page scrolls to number 5. If I click on number 1, it scrolls to number 1. So that's a built-in functionality. You don't need CSS or anything to do that. That's just what the browser does. But if you want to style the thing on the page that you targeted with the anchor tag, that's where this target element comes in. So up in our CSS, what I've done is just created some basic styles for the anchors and the paragraphs. I'm going to add the target, not target, but target. This is a selector. It's a pseudo class that's been added as part of CSS3. Now I can put whatever styles I want on this. So let's give it a nice badass green background. There we are. Refresh the page. Now P1, that's my target. That's the styling. If I click on number three, that's now the target. See the style on number one is gone. Number three is there. Click on number five. That's the one that gets targeted. So that's all there is. This target pseudo class will let you style the thing that was the target of the link that was clicked. Whether you're on the same page or you're on another website and you're just, you've got this whole URL, this little part at the end, the ID of the element that you're aiming for, that can be styled using this property. Okay, great. Or this selector, rather. So simple enough. Now, the one thing it doesn't let you do, we cannot. If we're on the same page and we're clicking a link to target something, I can't create a connection between the two of them. To do that, I need a little bit of JavaScript. Um, if I wanted to say that, okay, number five, that's the one that we've clicked here. So if I want to make number five that link be styled, I'd have to find a way of adding this class current here. So I could say class equals current, save it, reload the page. Okay, there's number five styled, and there's the paragraph five styled. But I had to manually edit this. So let's look at the JavaScript to quickly do that. I'm going to remove this from here. Save that. Go down to my script. Now, I've got three event listeners here. And I have the three just to demonstrate something. Um, I'm going to add a console log in here so that we can see what's happening. In my console log, I'm going to take the ev.type, so the type of the event. Now this function right here is being called by all three events, the load event, the DOM content loaded event, and the hash change. Um, pop state, uh, I'm not even going to bother with. It's, it's another event that you can use to find out when the page is loading, but pop state is never going to fire. If I'm on the same page and I click the link, I'm not going to get the pop state event happening when I want it to. So I'm not going to be able to access things. So that's why I have it commented out. All right, let's, uh, I'll add the P in there, the paragraph as well. Document query selector target. That's the same as my CSS. Back up here, target. So if there is a target defined in the URL, that's going to give me the paragraph that's targeted. All right, so let's save this come back over here, refresh, and there we are. Um, I clicked on the link, I loaded the page. This was part of the URL, so it meant that this got highlighted. My DOM content loaded, null. That's what I'm getting for the paragraph. So this target is really, it's not available when the DOM content loaded event happens. It's only available when the load happens. Okay, so great. Why don't I just use load? Well, the problem with load is, if I come in here and I click on paragraph number three, let's scroll this up to take a look. Here's what happens. DOM content loaded. It wasn't ready yet. The load event fires. That's what it was before. 
before I clicked on paragraph number three, if you look up in here, I know it's very small on uh, depending on what device you're looking at, but hash mark P3 is what is styled because that's the one that I clicked on. So this worked in the CSS, but when the load event fired, it was still P5. It's only when the hash change event happens that I get to P3. So load works great the first time you're coming to the page, but then as you're clicking on these links, so P1, I clicked on P1, the only event that fired was hash change. I don't get the load event again. Load is not going to happen. DOM content loaded is not going to happen if you are clicking on links and staying on the same page. You can see I'm only getting the hash change again and again and again and again. That means I need both load and hash change to target when this is happening. Load is when I'm coming in from outside the page. Hash change is if I'm staying on the same page and I'm doing this. I'm clicking links that are local to the page. Okay, so load and hash change, those are the two that I need. We can refresh this there, load worked, I'm on P4. If I click on number three, there we go, the hash change fired and I got P3. Great, so I know the paragraph. Based on the paragraph, I can ask for its ID. So I need to check to make sure that there is one here. If I, um, here, just let me finish my if statement. There we go, I'm checking for the existence of P. And the reason I'm doing that is when the page loads, if there's nothing there, null is what I'm gonna get. So I can't get the ID of null, so I need to check for this. Inside of here, we can say that uh, we want, uh, let's say, I'm gonna, I declared a few variables here to use. ID is one of them. I'm gonna get the selector, basically, for my anchor tag, which will include the ID from the paragraph. So a href equals something like this. That's what I'm looking to, is build a string that looks like this. Okay, I'm gonna put my template string quotations around it, the backtick characters, and I wanna replace this, oh, sorry, that should be a hash mark, p1. I'm gonna replace the p1 with a variable. So inside of a template string, that's how we create the variables and I want the paragraph, its ID. That's what we need here. So the ID is going to be PID inside as part of this. We want to look at it. We can do console.log, save that, reload. Okay, there's nothing yet. I click on number three. There we are. Ahref equals pound sign P3. If I click on number five, there we are. So this is the selector that we're looking for. I'm looking for the anchor tag that's going to match that selector. See, these are the values right here that we want. Great. So the ID is good. We know that it's the correct string that we want. And I'm going to do document.querySelector ID. And then A, that will give me the anchor tag. Do class list add current. Okay, great. Almost there. Almost done. Refresh that. Hey, cool. Number five worked. Number five's highlighted. Let's click on number one. There it is. One is highlighted and this. But now I've got a problem because I didn't leave the page. I've still got the class. And if I click on all of these, I'll eventually end up with all of them highlighted. So I've lost the benefit of highlighting the current one. We need to add a little bit of code inside of here. Just before we do this, we need to add some code that's going to remove the class current from any of the other anchor tags. So we'll say document query selector all. That's going to give me a node list of everything with the class current. And then I will do a for each a for each loop. And for each anchor that has that class, we're going to run a little ES6 arrow function where anchor dot class list remove, we want to get rid of the class current. So we're only going to loop through ones that have the class, oops, I need the period here. 
Query selector all current, so get everything that has this class on the page currently, loop through it, and remove the class current from those elements. So there's ever, only ever going to be one. This will, I guess in theory, we could just do query selector dot current, but just to be safe, let's say there's uh, something that was left in the HTML, there was a class that was hard coded on the first one, for example. We want to make sure that we get rid of that as well. So I'll refresh number two, great. Let's jump to number three, yeah, it works. Number four, it works. Number five, number one, we're good to go. All right, and that's it. That's how you use the target, and that's how you can combine the target with uh, right here, the target pseudo class with your JavaScript and use that in a practical way. So I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you did find it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.